then Gary just lost it. <laughs> He said he was going to hurt me, and at no point did he take that back. I wanted to be a stepmom to his children. I was actually scared. Hello, why did I wave? I always say this at the start of a story time, but I can't beat my first one I ever did. So if you haven't seen it, I'll link it below with all my other story times. However, this one is a good one. As you can see by the title, it's how I managed to get myself suspended <laughs> from one of my jobs. It's a very me reason to be suspended. <laughs> I worked in this office, it was a big building but the actual office I was in had about 30 people in. There was a group chat that we were all in, hated that group chat. I'm telling you about the group chat for a reason, this becomes a big part of the story. Our desks were kind of together and my desk was with, I'm going to call her Natalie and I'm going to call him Gary, that's not their real names. We were like a little group-ish but not because he was like a 48 year old man. The kind of relationship we had was quite jokey and quite sarcastic, but Gary was like no one else I've ever met in my life. Was almost like part man, part toddler. He would have these outbursts and it was just normal. It was just like, oh, that's just Gary. Which thinking about it, it's not really okay to be doing that at work. So for instance, once he was stood next to me at my desk and someone downstairs had done something wrong. He shouted at the top of his lungs their name and then crouched down to the floor. And I just remember looking at him and everyone was just like, oh, it's just Gary again. You didn't speak to him on them days. He would go sit back at his desk like this and he wouldn't speak to no one. He would just be fuming. That was just a norm, probably a weekly thing. Regardless of that, he was quite funny. We would all take the mick out of each other, but he was one of the best people because he could take it because he could also give it. So it sounds like really harsh, but... <laughs> He was so funny to have a laugh at. It's like he would love being the centre of attention, even if it was we were all having a laugh at his expense. It's like if I came in and my hair was wrecked, I would joke about it, and I wouldn't care if someone was taking the mick out of it. It's like that, like he was loving it. I'm not really explaining it well. I feel like you kind of have to know him. A funny adult toddler that would have random outbursts. He worked very closely with the director. He worked also very closely with a lot of other people that were high up. So he used to go do... Um, presentations for them and whilst he was in these presentations he would have his skype up as a joke like one of the things i would do is we would message him and he would panic seeing our name come up on screen because he wouldn't know what we would say because that was part of like the jokes we had together one of the jokes was that i would be really weird to him i would say things like i wanted to be the I wanted to be a stepmom to his children. There's something wrong with you, hon. He also had five children, so he'd come in, he would tell us stories about his children, about his wife. She would sometimes be on Skype, like video call with him, and we'd walk past like, hi. One of the jokes we did have was, <laughs> I wanted to be in a polyamorous relationship. <laughs> with him and his wife. But because we were so much younger than him, obviously that wasn't actually a thing that could ever happen. Well, it could, but it was never serious and we all knew it wasn't serious. It wasn't like I could be flirting with him because that was just not a thing. So it was part of like a funny joke. Like he would get involved with things with me and my ex-boyfriend. It's like a normal but really weird thing to say. So this one time on Skype, I was like, Gary. And he's like, what do you want? Obviously it's part of the joke. I'm like, do you think I, <laughs> I'd be like I really want to be uh, <laughs> I really want to be stepmom to your kids and he'd be like go away and then I'd pop up again Gary how do you feel about asking your wife if she wants to be in a polyamorous relationship with me like I'll move in I'll clean there's also jokes that he wouldn't he would sit upstairs and watch telly, so I'd be like, don't worry, I'll help her clean. And just to clarify, because I know the internet is a very sensitive place, this was a joke that he was actively involved in and actively found funny, and and it was a joke between both of us, not just me. <laughs> so anyway, fast forward to how I managed to get myself suspended. It was basically a week where I was so excited because I was going to see Adele in concert and I was going on the Saturday. So on the Friday, everyone at work knew I was going. I was really excited, couldn't wait. Long story short, Adele cancelled. So I woke up on Saturday and messaged Natalie and was like, oh my God, I'm so sad that like she's cancelled. My boyfriend at the time sent Natalie a photo of me on my bed like, hmm. She puts this photo of me in the group chat. Gary responds with this weird 
weird message. I don't even know what he said, but it was something really peculiar. Acting as if I was pathetic for even being sad, even though it was like a joke, but not a joke, because I was sad. So the conversation continued, people were like, oh, what happened, blah, blah, blah. And then Gary just lost it. He... <laughs> And we realised he lost it when he started calling us all millenni millennial motherfuckers. <laughs> He's fully actually fuming, which was so bizarre because it was nothing to do with him. I was just upset that Adele cancelled. We were all so confused. He was still saying stuff in this group chat that was very weird, pushing his anger more at me and Natalie. And then he said to me that he will hurt me. And that's when I was a bit like, okay, maybe a, a bit too far. Like I'm actually a bit worried. Because the way he was when he was annoyed was quite concerning anyway. Like, he clearly had some sort of anger issues. As far as I was aware, on Friday when we all left, it was like, Bye, enjoy Adele, see ya. Now he's calling me a millennial motherfucker the next day and telling me he's gonna hurt me. I was actually scared. So I was like, I don't know what to do. You can see who's read the messages. And my manager, who was in the group chat, hadn't read the messages yet. So the conversation dies down and I end up messaging my manager and basically said, you know that we all have a laugh and a joke, but I feel like maybe that was a bit too far. I don't know if you've read the group chat yet, but I'm a bit concerned that he told me he's gonna hurt me. And the way the office was, we would do late shifts and it would either be Gary or the manager that was with us. I was concerned because I had a late shift on the Monday with Gary, but like I needed to say, oh, can you talk to him or something? Because I'm a bit worried. We were both a bit worried, me and Natalie. I love crime and thriller. I was already seeing the documentary that I was going to be part of when Gary kills me. <laughs> this might sound dramatic, but that was where my brain was going. Fast forward to Monday, I get in the office. I'm slightly concerned with the fact he's actually sat right next to me, basically, and right next to Natalie, and that nothing's really happened, because I thought it was actually quite serious. So I carried on working, it was very awkward, very uncomfortable. Then it got to 4.30, and they all just buggered off. It was literally me, Natalie, Gary, and one other person. So I'm actually scared, and call me dramatic, but every time he went into the kitchen, I kept imagining him coming back in with a knife. I know that is dramatic, but I was actually really scared. If you had seen this man's outburst, you would know. And I'm gonna keep reiterating, he said he was going to hurt me, and at no point did he take that back. I don't know why I'm laughing. I can't remember if we decided half hour into this that we were just gonna leave because it wasn't fair, and then we messaged the manager and told her that. I'm pretty sure that happened. This was years ago, so I'm not gonna remember every small detail. There was some training going on, so they separated us with that training. He then started going into the director's office a lot. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if he was talking to them. I just didn't know what was happening. But he still didn't come up to me once, didn't go up to Natalie once, didn't say anything to us, didn't apologize. I'm pretty sure we hadn't heard anything from him. So I went and spoke to the director and I hadn't actually spoke to him, I would spoke to the manager. Because of how Gary was, his outburst on WhatsApp wasn't out of the ordinary. So the main thing was between me and Gary. Although there was also tension with him and Natalie. It seemed to just be more with me and him. I don't even know why, how, how, what, where, blah, blah, blah. how, what, why, or where this came from. Especially as it all stemmed from him getting annoyed at me because I was upset that Adele cancelled her concert. It said my concerns and explained it all. We had a bit of a laugh because it was ridiculous. And we spoke about Adele. And then I went home. The next day I come in, the director then called me into his office. This was at the end of the day. And he said, tomorrow, you don't have to come into work, but I need you to go to HR. So he basically just wanted to explain to me that HR need to speak to me because Gary had raised a concern about me. The whole night I spent trying to think what possibly he could have complained about. Couldn't think of it at all because we'd got on this whole time. Get into the office and the woman that I was going to be speaking to was like the HR assistant and the head of HR said, you're going to be talking to, let's call her Gabby. And the one thing about Gabby was she was the most hard character to read. I couldn't always tell if she was serious. She was quite, not sarcastic, but blunt. I don't know what the word is. So she sits me down and she was so we've, he's made a complaint against you. Is it called a grievance? He had all these papers with her. She was like, I've, <laughs> I've got your Skype conversations printed off. They went back as far as April, for God's sake. So this man has done something wrong and thought about what can I say about this girl to get her in trouble? 
He's gone back five months, so you said some really inappropriate things to him. And she reads the conversation out, but when they're not read in context, it just sounded hilarious, because she's reading it so serious. You said, Gary. He said, what do you want now? You said, can I be in a polyamorous relationship with you and your wife? Really, really sorry. I didn't realise that it was... <laughs> Why are you laughing? I wish I still had these printed off because she gave them to me. You then said, I think I'll make a good stepmom to you kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it just went on and on. And I was like, but Gabby, that was part of the joke. I be weird. We laugh about it. I don't even think she laughed, which was making it funnier. I said these things, but as a joke. He knew it was a joke. This is why he's taken this many months to complain. And I think she did know all this. So she was like, yeah, okay. She was writing all this stuff down. I'm just sat there in complete disbelief. Trust me to be actually having a serious conversation with HR about a joke that's gone too far. That just sums me up. She says that she needs to go speak to the head of HR with all her notes and stuff. It felt like the longest five minutes of my life. She comes back, she sits down, she goes, they're taking it very seriously. Now I'm panicking. I literally thought I'm gonna lose my job. I am because I'm gonna lose my job. I'm gonna get sacked for a joke. I'm afraid we're gonna have to suspend you pending investigation. Investigation to what? Like you can see it is a joke, what? I don't understand. So then I've got to sit there and explain our whole relationship, the jokes we had, the jokes he said to me that maybe have gone too far that I'm not offended by, but I need to tell you them so you know that we're sort of, you know, it's tit for tat. So she's like, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. She writes it all down for their investigation. She's like, just go enjoy the sun. Why has she been so chilled about this? I couldn't work out if she just didn't give a crap if I lost my job or it's not that serious and they just had to suspend me. Well, how long am I suspended for? And she was like, a week. I just drove to Naomi's, I didn't know what to do. And I remember sitting in Naomi's car with her sister and she was like, Jess, you might actually get sacked. I was like, oh no. And so we were all kind of convinced that was it, like I was gonna lose my job. I think other people got spoken to. Latterly definitely got spoken to. I decided not to worry about it because I didn't know what was gonna happen. And I was just hoping that I wouldn't lose my job. And then two days into my suspension, I was kind of enjoying it. It was a work night, I liked to be in bed by half eleven. And obviously it wasn't a work night, I was suspended, I was living the dream. So I was up, it was like 12 o'clock at night, and I got this email, basically saying to come in the next day. And I was like, they can't do this. I'm on suspension. It was like I was treating it like I was, I'm on holiday. I decided that I was going to pretend I didn't see that email until the morning so I could have a lay in. I walked in at like half 10, 11. I didn't have to speak to HR this time. I got to speak to the director and he was like, right, you're not going to lose your job. Don't worry about it. Oh my God. <laughs> what we're going to have to do is change the whole office around. Didn't have lates or earlies together. And then he said that Gary. So I can't remember if I was allowed to know this bit. So I cut it out, but he had to do something about his anger, put it that way. I didn't get any disciplinaries as well. He might have Skyped an apology over, but as part of our job, we did actually need to communicate with him. That made it less uncomfortable because we started having just the odd conversation about work stuff. It made me realize never to get too close to people at work that you don't really know. I mean, you don't really know anyone at work, but you need to be very careful because you don't know when they're gonna decide that your joke is now offensive. <laughs> as months went on, he was trying to like, creep back and be nice to us, because I think he missed us, because we all had a great laugh. Him going to HR about a joke that we had had meant that we could never joke again. Hope you enjoyed the story time. I never know if they're crap, because I always compare it to my first story time. Give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Toodaloo, millennial motherfuckers. <laughs>